Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to look at this synthesis where we are going to be starting with this cyclohexene, and we are going to be adding a methyl group onto our double bond. Of course, if there was a reaction where we could grab a methyl group and add it to a double bond, our conversation would be quite short here, but unfortunately there is no reaction like that, so we'll have to go back to our retrosynthetic analysis and see how we can accomplish this uh, transformation using our normal reactions and our normal tools. So the first thing that we are going to do in our analysis is, as usual, see if we have any new carbon-carbon bonds. And of course we do have a new carbon-carbon bond that we are trying to create over here. The typical method of new carbon-carbon bond creation that we have in our course is going to be via the Grignard reaction or similar reactions maybe with organolithium compounds or something like that. Which means that the predecessor here is most likely going to be an alcohol. And of course if I am creating a new carbon-carbon bond using the Grignard reaction, the alcohol is going to be on the same carbon where I have attached my extra carbon. The starting material for the Grignard reaction is of course going to be some sort of a carbonyl, which means that if I am trying to create a new bond over here, my starting material needs to be cyclohexanone, which we are going to react with methyl magnesium bromide to get our next compound. And we can easily synthesize our cyclohexanone via the cyclohexanol from our starting material. And since we have reached our starting material, our retrosynthetic analysis here is done, so we can fill in the gaps and show the actual reagents for this synthesis. So to go from the cyclohexene to cyclohexanol, we can use a whole bunch of different methods. Anything from the simple hydration, which is just going to be water in sulfuric acid, to anything like hydroboration oxidation, which would give the same product in this case since the molecule is completely symmetrical, so we are not worried about regioselectivity. Now, next, to go from the alcohol to a ketone, we are going to use the oxidation reaction, and since this is a secondary alcohol, it really doesn't matter which type of oxidation we are going to use. You can use anything from the Jones oxidation, which is your chromium oxide and sulfuric acid, or chromic acid, or potassium bichromate, anything like that, to anything like PCC, or PDC, or SWERN, or uh, the smarting per iodinate, really doesn't matter. Secondary alcohols will always oxidize just to a ketone, and that will be the end of the story. Now, for the next reaction, first we are going to do the reaction of our carbonyl with the Grignard reagent itself. So we are going to show that the first step here is the reaction with C CH3 magnesium bromide, and of course, like with any organometallic reaction, the second step gotta be an acidic workup to protonate our O- that we are going to get as an intermediate there. And to accomplish our last step, we are going to be making a double bond that is a more substituted double bond out of all possible ones, so that is going to be a simple dehydration, so we don't need to invent the wheel here, and we can do a simple dehydration of alcohols in acidic media. And we can easily accomplish that by treating our or alcohol with something like sulfuric acid at high temperature to get our final product. And there you get it! Thank you for watching! Leave me a questions and feedback in the comments below. If you learned something new today, hit that like button to help promote this video and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow!